Yeah. And there goes Bane. Well, Penguin, I guess that means... What? Let's go! Let's go! What's up, DC Nation? Welcome back to another video on the Batman, the 2004 animated series. Today, I'm checking out Season 4, Episode 2, titled Team Penguin. So, Penguin's gonna be in this episode, but what I'm really expecting to happen is to see the Bat Family out in action. Batman, Robin, and Batgirl. We already got the dynamic duo established last episode. Did a great job kicking off the season and establishing Robin. We got a great Robin origin. And yeah, I already like the dynamic between Batman and Robin in this show. I'm excited to see Robin and this version of Batgirl interact. So guys, this season so far, off to a great start. Can it keep up the momentum? We'll see. But before we get to this episode, make sure you follow my socials, Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram. They all have the same username, lowercase DC underscore enthusiast1. Also, go check out my website, dcenthusiast.com, where you can watch all my full episode reactions, including the one for this episode. And yeah, guys, with all that being said, your reaction to The Batman Season 4 Episode 2 starts now. Mm. Able to do alone. Okay. The bat jerks wings permanently. All right. So, like, I actually like that premise. The idea of Penguin gathering a group of Batman's rogues to fight him. Team Penguin. It's simple. Oh, Bane. What? An invitation. Yo. Okay. Dude, that's even better. I was talking about Killer Croc, who we haven't seen in like two seasons, but Bane, we haven't seen since the beginning of season one. Four seasons. Which is crazy. Like, I've been waiting for Bane to return. Like, he was awesome in season, season one, episode three, Tremors. His first appearance, and I thought it was going to be his last, but nah. Bane is back, baby. All right. And he's going to be a part of Penguin's team. Dude, well, that basically tells me there'll be no Killer Croc, because there can't be two brutes on Penguin's team, or maybe there can. Dude, if Killer Croc now shows up and we have Bane and Killer Croc teaming up, or maybe they fight each other, oh my gosh, that'd be so hype. That would be hype. That would get me so excited, man. Alright, let's see what happens here. Dog, Batgirl's here. Dude, what is Batgirl gonna do to Bane? Like, like, no offense to Batgirl, but I feel like Bane will just, you know, one punch and breaks her neck. Hmm, uh, good luck. I hope she does good with this. Hmm. They're a dynamic duo. Batgirl's like, ah, oh, I'm not a part of this anymore. She's an outsider. Oh. Come on. Distraction maneuver, like we practiced. Hmm. He's had training. Yeah. Dude, I was just about to say, like, she's gonna get on Batman because she's like, hey, you took it took you so long to trust me and just let me in and give me the bat wave and you didn't train me, but now you train this kid. He knows maneuvers and he goes in your formation and he's got a bow staff. I didn't get a bow staff. I had to create my own weapons. Like, I kind of feel for Batgirl here. It's kind of messed up. But at the same time, the dynamic duo, oh my gosh, how they entered and how they're working together, it's the best team up ever. The best team up in comics, Batman and Robin. The best character to sidekick, master to sidekick, right? Mentor to sidekick, that's the better way to say it. He's got moves. Okay, Bane, bro, okay. Y you tell me, Bane, after being defeated by Batman last time because he hid his chemicals, right? He didn't change anything up? 
Like, that's, al that's always been one thing in the comics, which actually in the comics I think he modified so he could counter Batman's attack. Because originally Bane, or, nah, originally Bane just had Venom. It's not like he, in this version, he has like the tubes sticking out, so if you cut the tubes, he's done. Where originally he doesn't have that, he's not as weak. Where this Bane, uh, he's kind of... There's opportunity for weakness. Like, he's way weaker than his comic counterpart. And the fact that he went back out into Gotham to commit crimes with the tubes still hanging out, still open for Batman to take out with one hit. Like, come on. Bane's gotta be a little smarter than that. Like, Bane is a criminal mastermind in the comics. He is. Here... Even though I was, I was just saying he's awesome on this show, he's a badass, I like his design, he's not a criminal mastermind, and yeah. He, this version of Bane has his pros and his cons, but I'm still happy to see him back, at least for this one scene. I, well, he did get an invitation from Penguin, so we'll see more of him in this episode, hopefully. Yeah, and there goes Bane. What? Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Yo, I, I, well, man, this episode is re my mind. I swear. I was, okay, so Bane's out of the equation, and I was, oh, man, that kind of sucks because Bane is cool, but he's out, and I was just saying if Killer Croc shows up, I'll get hyped, and we can maybe have Killer Croc and Bane, but it looks like Bane's officially out, and now Killer Croc is about to be like, all right, you got the one, the one brute you're trying to get is in captivity. I'm another brute. I'm another strong man. Get me on your team. Penguin and Killer Croc. And it sounds like he's still voiced by Ro Ron Perlman. Ron Perlman is back. Dude, and he looks so cool. Dude, this episode is the return for so many villains already. We had Bane, Killer Croc, and Penguin. He's always showing up. Like, it's like, he's, he, he shows up as much as the Joker in this show. They're like the two characters that just show up constantly, which, which is fine. Because this version of Penguin is amazing. But, dude, that's exciting. This episode, I'm loving it, man. Uh, all right, all right, let's keep watching. Now I'm curious, okay, we got Penguin, Killer Croc. What other villains are going to come back? Could we get, okay, let me think. There, there's not going to be no, like, Riddler. I know Riddler is not going to show up. He, he, he definitely will not. If he, do, if he does, dude, if Riddler shows up, that will be hype. If Joker shows up, that will be exciting. And, uh, hmm. I'm trying to think of, like, minor villains. What was the one... What, wasn't it, like, a Ragman... Or not Ragman, but there's like another guy who could like move his body parts in weird ways, I think. Who was in season two. Rags to riches. Yeah, it was Ragman. Maybe he'll be in this. Maybe. Actually, I'm going to stop there, Ricey. Let's just see what Team Penguin will be. Is out. Mm. Kind of thing is exactly why I've been saying we need to team up, Croc. Yeah. Firefly. Alright, this episode's reading my mind, bro. What the heck is going on, bro? What is the what wasn't oh my gosh. Dude, we got Penguin, Killer Croc, Firefly, and I was just talking about this guy. Ragman. That is his name, right? Ragman. This episode is reading my mind, I swear. I was like, where is Killer Croc? I, I didn't know that Bane would come back, though, so that was a surprise. But And Killer Croc was still surprised. Ragman, hey, well, it, it, he is still a surprise. But just the fact that I was thinking about them, man, who else could show up? 
Nah, okay, I I'm gonna stop thinking it because I'm gonna ruin, for ruin it for myself. I'm gonna be thinking of the villains of how many like minor villains there have been and just factor them into this equation and they'll probably show up. Or, or maybe not. So far, we got a stellar lineup of villains. Hmm. Ragdoll, not Ragman, Ragdoll. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Killer Moth? This guy. This guy. Look at his. Oh. Mmm. <laughs> Dude, I love this dynamic. Like, Ron Perlman kills it, bro. Like, just how Killer Croc talks. But this is probably my favorite version of Killer Croc, even more than Beat Sass. I'm, go I'm going to say that. And then Ragdoll, charismatic, awesome character. This version of Firefly, my favorite version of Firefly um, so far. Like, I think he's. Was he in Beat Sass? I, I don't remember, honestly. And the fact that I don't remember, yeah, I'm gonna go, this is my favorite version of Firefly. And then Penguin's cool, but Killer Moth? And this is his first appearance, right? Yeah, this is Killer Moth's uh, first appearance, and his design, <laughs> he looks so stupid. Like, Killer Moth is a joke character. There has been some stories where uh, writers take his character more seriously, it ends up being compelling, but a lot of times he's just a parody, and he's a funny character, he adds to the story a lot. Nice wings. Hmm. Now, now, give the man a chance. Yeah, give the man a chance. Let him cook. Oh man, they're doing him dirty, he's a coffee maker. <laughs> what? What was that laugh? You guys heard that, right? No. Sorry, this is a blueprint for success. Mm, robust. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, dude! We we gotta replay that one more time. That is the most. What kind of laugh is that? You hear Killer Moth's laugh? <laughs> I'm gonna keep playing that one more time. Let's move. Let's move. I can't get over his laugh, man. Mm. Killer Moth is so innocent and. Ooh! Ooh! That was so smooth! Did, did you guys see that? You saw the same thing, right? Batman, how the Batmobile pulled up and then Batman and Robin jumped out. So smooth. Dude, look at that Batmobile. I swear, it's like they kicked up the animation a little bit for this one, one shot. Like, look at that shot right there. It, it just looks so HD. <laughs> I, I, I don't know how it's, it looks so clean. So, man, well done. Shout out to the animators. And this right here. Mmm. The dynamic duo is here. And where is Batgirl? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, let's go. Yeah, Robin. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, uh, there's Moth. <laughs> Yo. Yo. Dude, he is terrifying. He really is a killer Moth now. <laughs> what? 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 Dude, Killer Moth 
was being disrespected by Penguin, but he s didn't see that. Instead, he's seen the other villains disrespecting his boss, Penguin, and now he's like, nah, you respect him or I mess you up. And uh, dude, Killer Moth looks so cool. He actually looks terrifying, and, but he still has that... He still has that personality that's funny and innocent, you know? His innocent personality does not match his terrifying look, and I love it. And dude, look at Killer Croc, Ragdoll, and Firefly. They're like, yeah, 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 whatever you say, man. Like, we're not trying to be eat eaten by a killer moth. Like, nah. What happened to him? I'm playing with okay, I want to go back to that shot of seeing Penguin. Dude, look at that team. That is a stellar lineup. Like, you have Penguin, Firefly, Ragdoll, Killer Croc, and the new Killer Moth. And look at that shot. Like, that is so cool. This is my favorite version of Killer Moth, favorite version of Firefly, favorite version of Ragdoll, and definitely my favorite version of Killer Croc. Dude, this might be the best episode of the series thus far. I thought last episode was a masterpiece. This episode, not only does it have a good story, but it's doing something new. That's what makes it a little better from last episode. Like, last episode, I knew the story. Like, we all know Robin's origin. They did expand upon it, but here it's an all-new story. Like, yeah, the idea of supervillain team-ups is not new, but this team-up is new. The, this set of characters, I've never seen these characters come together in the comics or any other Batman media, so it's cool to see. I'm playing with hit by a radioactive mothball from outer hmm. space. <laughs> from outer space, okay. Hmm. Dude! Batgirl versus Firefly. We were gonna get that in the Batgirl movie with uh Brendan uh, Fraser at or Brendan Fraser as Firefly and Leslie Grace as Batgirl. Now I heard the movie was terrible and it got scrapped, but still it is cool to see Batgirl versus Firefly here. You know I like just that parallel. We could got that in the movies, but it's cool to get here in animation. And yep, done. Fireflies, the first one out. I'm guessing Ragdoll will be next. What? Ragdoll, you suck. Come on, bro. How did he get beat up in the vents? Like, if you think about it, Robin doesn't have no space to really, you know, fight. Where Ragdoll can move his joints around, but he somehow got beat? Like, respect to Robin, but Ragdoll... That was your game. That was his opportunity to show his skills. That was like the best place Robin could have went where the favor would have been in Ragdoll's hands and he screwed it up. Like, come on, Ragdoll. Oh. Awesome. You know what's cool about this? Usually, Bane is the criminal mastermind, and Killer Croc isn't. At least in Beats Ass, that's how it is. Or even the comics, honestly. But here, Bane is just a regular villain, a regular brute, and Killer Croc is the mastermind. I like that switch. I'm not gonna lie, I like the switch, even if I wanted Bane to be a criminal mastermind. But hey... We got some good Killer Croc material, it looks like he's done. We got some good Firefly material and Ragdoll. I'm so happy they returned, and yeah. Let's see how the Bat Family will ultimately deal with Killer Moth and Penguin. At the same, or during the screening of the same movie Penguin was watching in the beginning. A blueprint for success. <laughs> Hmm, a bat smile. Hmm. I love it. Uh, a bat family that works together well. A happy Batman that is mentoring two great sidekicks. And a supervillain team up that was awesome. 
But yeah, guys, getting to the review portion of this video, I first want to talk about the villain team up we got in this episode. Great villain team up, Team Penguin, as the title implies. And I originally thought it was just gonna be okay, Penguin with his goons, but no, we got Penguin who always returns. That was cool, but we had Killer Croc, voiced by Ron Perlman. Guys, I got so hyped. Like, that was so awesome. Killer Croc is one of my favorite villains in the show. He might be my favorite villain in the show. And yeah, he was great in this episode. We also had Firefly, who may return. And Killer Croc, the last time we saw him was in Season 2, the episode Swamped. Firefly, the last time we saw him was in Season 2 as well fire and ice and in that episode it was firefly and mr freeze mr freeze did not make a return this episode but he did get mentioned also joker got mentioned now other than killer croc and firefly we had ragdoll he returned we haven't seen him since season two as well in the episode rags to riches and then our new character killer moth and i'll get to him i'm gonna have a special uh, part of this review portion just for him, but yeah, it was a great villain team up all the returning villains got great moments and, and it got me excited and what's cool about this is Killer Moth and Ragdoll are voiced by the same voice actor and in Killer Croc voiced by Ron Perlman well, guess what? Ron Perlman also voiced another villain this episode, and that villain being Bane. That gets to my next topic, the return of Bane. Okay, so Bane was originally voiced by a different voice actor in his debut episode way back in season one, episode three, titled Traction. I originally thought it was Tremors, but no, the episode title was Traction. And yeah, Bane has been absent ever since. I was he thought that was it like he wasn't going to return but to my surprise he made a big return in the beginning of this episode he wasn't on team penguin though but he's still an awesome return in the beginning of the episode and it got to show off the bat family We're, well not working together well kind of working badly together and we'll get to the bat family soon but bane returning and him being voiced by ron perlman this time was a nice touch i like ron perlman voicing the big strong men the big brutes on this show bane and killer croc now to my next topic the last villain that i want to talk about the big mvp of this episode killer moth Killer Moth made his big debut in this episode, and this would probably be his only episode, I barely doubt he'll return, but man, he was cool. Like at the beginning of the episode when Killer Moth showed up, he had charisma, he was funny, he had hilarious design, him being the coffee maker, his laugh, like he was a nice character to add to the episode. But when he actually became a creature, a Killer Moth, his character elevated to another level. His new design design was awesome and yeah he had terrifying creature design but he still maintained that innocent voice which cracked me up and yeah killer moth he made this episode go to another level i love his character here this might be my favorite version of this character killer moth does not get enough love He's a hilarious character. He can be used in compelling ways sometimes. And this episode kind of did that. Like, he was actually a compelling character while also being hilarious, which that is a perfect balance. Now, to my next topic, the Bat Family developments. The last episode established a dynamic duo, Batman and Robin. Last season established Batman Batgirl. And this episode established the Bat Family, Batman, Robin, and Batgirl. And and yeah, just seeing Batman train both of them and Batgirl finally being welcomed into the Batcave, finding out Bruce Wayne is Batman, and even better, Batgirl and Robin's interactions were great. Now, I do hope we get another episode of just them teaming up. Like, that has a lot of potential. And yeah, just, just seeing their interactions in this episode shows me that this show will nail the Robin and Batgirl dynamic. Not their relationship, they're too young here, but their dynamic is hilarious. Their back and forth dialogue, how they're always trying to... Uh, 
outsmart or just be better than each other in front of Batman. And that final scene in this episode where they take off on their grappling hooks in the Gotham City and Batman smiles. He's like, I did it. They're doing well. And he takes off with them. It was nice. It's just cool to see how far this Batman and now this Bat family has gone. Like so much development since season one. Now to my final topic in this video, could this season, season four, be the best season yet? Like this is the strongest start to uh, the Batman season so far. Like season one started out strong, it was good. Season two started out strong. Season three, yeah, I would say that all this season started out well, but this season, like, come on, two episodes that are masterpieces, like, that's gonna be hard to keep up the momentum, but I bet they could do it. If this season keeps up this masterpiece quality, it, man, it, it might be better than season two. Like, I think season two is the best season so far. It was an awesome season, and season three wasn't better than it. Like, season three was a good season, but it had its flaws, where this season, come on, we got the Bat Family, great villains, a great development of Batman's character, and there's so much potential here. Like, this is going to be the best season. I'm going to say it right now. This season, season four, will be better than season two. At least I hope. Like, that's that's some hard competition. It's hard to be better than season two. That was just such a great season, but I have some high hopes. And yeah, you guys should already know. I'm giving this episode Team Penguin a 10 out of 10. It's my favorite episode of this series so far. I'm gonna say that. I thought last episode was so good and there's certain other episodes like the Laughing Bat where Joker became Batman in season two that rivals this episode. But yeah, this episode Team Penguin is one of, if not the best episode in the entire series. It deserves the 10 out of 10, the masterpiece rating. But yeah, guys, some of your thoughts on this episode down below. If you liked the video, give a big thumbs up. New channel, make sure to subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on my next The Bat Batman reaction and review and yeah guys thanks for watching and peace out